So I've been getting some comments and some emails regarding why are you so depressed and get over your depression and you just should, you know, my favorite kind of comment. And so I just wanted to address this idea of what depression is. I am licensed as a therapist. I do know a little bit about it. And I thought I would just sort of highlight a few things about what actually depression is. And I really wanted to talk about it though in relationship to these big ideas that I've been bringing up like an extinction event and a terminal diagnosis. There's a lot more to this story than a pill that people want to take or an attitude you just need to get over. So we're going to do that here now today. We're going to take a deep breath and we're going to see you on the other side. So one of the reasons I don't practice anymore as a licensed therapist in a clinical setting where I charge a lot of money and I bill insurance is because uh, we don't even understand in the world today really what depression is. So just as a quick recap, uh, there's a lot of clinical definitions that call depression a, a real medical condition and it can be a real medical condition. Uh, there is a, a lot of different criteria for a lot of different legal types of depression. And so the first thing I want to offer you about this idea of depression is just like a medical condition, if you don't have a label, a defined diagnosis, and an exact treatment plan, you don't get paid. So there's absolutely zero incentive as a clinical professional within the the system to not diagnose you with something and tell you it is a behavioral emotional issue or something a pill can fix because that's the fastest way to get paid and the easiest way to create that nice little flow chart to get you back out of the system as fast as possible so the insurance provider will be happy. <laughs> uh, so I don't like the word depression and what I've learned about depression is almost none of it is what we would call a real depression. And what we've learned over the last uh, several decades, even though they've done a lot of diagnosing and experimenting uh, with the ideas of psychology, uh, and there's a lot of backlash against that, but there are a lot of things that cause what we would call a depressive state. But we also have this huge fear in society to be anything less than happy. And so because we have a slight date case of discomfort or we're thinking about something or we're in a normal grieving process, people want to run and get a pill so they can feel better. Now, I could do a whole thing on medication and all the problems that it causes, but we're not going to do that here today. I just want to take a step back uh, to talk about this idea of depression and is it a normal response to something like an extinction event or a terminal diagnosis. Now one of my jobs was as a hospice social worker and uh, I'll never forget a woman who was crying because she had just been put on hospice for breast cancer and her doctor became so uncomfortable with her crying he immediately put her on an antidepressant. And the reason that's a problem is that it's masking the normal grief process, that we are as humans have become terrified of feelings we can't control. But it's actually more complex than that because as we've moved to a more aware state of how our bodies and our minds and our brains work, we know that things like our uh, chemical balance, our nutrition, light, sleep, environment stressors, uh, circumstantial evidence, uh, in utero, I was just watching uh, information about how stress affects uh, a mother's stress affects the baby and all the problems that come with that, how stress affects generations multi, several generations down. So there's way more we don't know about how things work than we do. But I've got a real easy sort of three-step process in terms of should you be worried about your depression. Is uh, one, normal depression, we define it as just apathy and you don't want to do anything, uh, which is very different than there's all kinds of things I want to do, but I feel heavy, I feel sad, I feel overwhelmed, I feel stuck. I want to go do those things, but I can't do those things. Totally different than my life is pretty normal and I just don't feel motivated to do anything. So to me, that's a huge dividing line. And usually if you want to do something, but you feel like you can't, you feel like there's a pressure, a weight on you, uh, if you have anxiety about moving forward, if you just want to 
cry or just sit and watch TV and everything else around your life is perfect, then there's still a lot of reasons why that might be happening. And just sitting around and doing nothing is one of them. The other thing that I would tell you about depression is, is that you will never feel like doing anything. So here's your quick test if it's a real depression or not. Get outside and get some sun. A little harder to do in winter if you can't get vitamin D. So uh, exposing yourself to one of those 10,000 lights or taking vitamin D with a fat source to supplement yourself. Uh, and exercise. Move your body. Get off the electronic device. Clean out a drawer. Do something. And two weeks of being in motion with a little sun, vitamin D, uh, B vitamin support if you start to feel better, it's probably not a real depression. Now, all these things in our environment, uh, caffeine, any kind of stimulant, any kind of stress, all that causes a crash, which then feels like a depression. And part of what we're doing with this whole end of the world scenario, inter information stuff, is we're constantly stimulating ourselves and our adrenals and our fear centers, which crashes and then becomes depression. But we don't want to feel bad, so we stimulate again. Now we're moving into what you might also know as addiction. We are addicted to the stimulation of bad news. FYI, 75% of people like negative stimulation in their brain better than positive stimulation. That's why when it bleeds, it leads is so much more popular than good news and happy stories. And so this idea of a great big thing, like you're having a personal terminal diagnosis or the earth is having a terminal diagnosis, it's a normal reaction to have some grieving around those ideas. And the last thing you want to do is stunt that emotional response because your ability to process through those emotions and those feelings and get to the other side will create a much greater ability to cope and a much more vibrant experience uh, in the face of an extreme event, whether it's personal or whether it's global. Uh, the first piece of advice, though, would be to get off the internet, get outside, and get in the sun before you jump on a medication. But most people are so depleted. They're depleted nutritionally. They're lonely. They're addicted to something. They're stressed. They're overwhelmed. They don't exercise. They're watching too much television. They're watching too much electromagnetic frequency. We are so screwed up with our environment and our uh our processes as we go through the day of all the things we don't do, most people aren't depressed, but they feel depressed because they're not living anything close to the way that they're supposed to. So that's why I've really moved back and I've moved into this primal heart training idea. Uh, what I learned living out in nature and in the dirt was everything that I was told that cures depression uh, really didn't work. Just talking about my feelings wasn't enough. Uh, it was really a long-term process of understanding all the ways that we are influenced by our environment, we're influenced by our thoughts, and how we choose to manage our feelings are much greater contributors to why we feel the way we do, whether it's anxiety, depression, or happiness. And the bottom line is, is we shouldn't avoid topics that are depressing. Rather, we should be able to look at them and process them in such a way that we create more strength, more love, more in, uh, endurance, more empathy. It makes us much more powerful. So uh, I don't practice in a clinical setting anymore because I would have to lie to you in order to get paid. And I can't do that and be in integrity. What I can do is live by example, which is a little bit of what we're doing in this video. So back to the first question. Am I depressed? No. Has this been a hard winter? Frickin' absolutely. It's been dark, it's been cold, it's been snowy, it's been confining. Uh, I've had a lot of problems behind the scenes, uh, a lot of issues coming up that I can't resolve. So real life is hard sometimes, and you might see that reflected in my face and my tone. But I like to take on the big stuff, and the big stuff is things like a terminal diagnosis or an extinction event, because I know if I can get through that, if I can ride that wave, I can do anything, and that's not depressing. I can't think of a more exciting way to live at all. That's what I'm doing here. So that's my quick answer to depression here at Survival Road on this journey. 
I hope that helps clear up a few things. Uh, in the meantime, we're just going to take a deep breath. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe and like because uh, YouTube is unsubscribing everybody. I don't know what's going on, but uh, the YouTube world is coming to a close. The online payment system is coming to a close. So enjoy these videos while you can because before you know it, they might 